What could you truly become capable of if you were living in greater resonance and synchronicity with your essence? If you were able to be aligning with your divine every day and creating from that energy, are you ready to explore and activate that? Let's get started aligning divine. Now, here's your host, Soul and Body Coach, Keisha Clark. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this great, big, beautiful, amazing, magical world. Hello and welcome to Aligning Divine. I am Keisha Clark. I am your host and I am a soul and body intuitive and facilitator and you could also say coach. And I have the extremely amazing joy <laughs> of getting to play in the field of vibrational alchemy and that is part of how I get to tap into and have the things we talk about on this show which are all things having to do with with the joy, having the joy, finding the joy, tapping into it, expanding it, activating the joy of lining up with your essence and living it every day. And so that is a pretty broad spectrum of things we get to play with. And uh, today we're going to play with a kind of an interesting topic, um, might be a little controversial for some of you, and if it pushes some buttons, I invite you to lean into that just a little or maybe a lot, wherever you're ready to go, and um, and see what it might just pop open for you, or at least if it sparks a curiosity, um, or even you might have a profound awareness, because you know, we have a lot of topics we play with, and um, I am one of the people who my first experience with the Inspired Choices Network was listening to a lot of shows that people had um, had amazingly created and having my own profound moments of awareness and aha, and um, that is part of what invited me and inspired me to become a host on this network. So <laughs> so you never know what a podcast, a.k.a. radio show, uh, is going to shake open for you or pop open or shake loose or even shake up in your world. So podcasts are pretty amazing, aren't they? We have these beautiful little works of art, beautiful creations, and we can enjoy them anywhere and at any time. So whatever platform you are finding us on and however you're playing with us and whenever you're finding us, um, thank you for, for doing that, for choosing that. And um, if it's your first time landing here on Aligning Divine or even on the Inspired Choices Network, welcome and thank you. And um, how would you like to play? And if if um, you find shows that don't really blow your hair back, you could probably find a whole lot of other shows that do. So <laughs> we have like over 5,000 podcasts in our collection, in our library here on the network. And I am talking about the network too because I have the joy of being, as well as a host, a producer here on the Inspired Choices Network. And I get to play with a lot of our amazing hosts so there's a whole lot to choose from. There's a whole lot of ways to play. There's a whole lot to play with. And it's really all about supporting you and inspiring you to really bring more of you to play on this planet Earth playground. So, woo, Aligning Divine is my little corner of the network that I get to play with you through. So what can we create this hour? And, um, well, roughly 55 minutes or so. And, and how would you like to... Um, how would you like to play today? What would you like to discover about yourself today? Um, the topic we're going to play with in particular is when spirituality becomes your drug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're playing with um, the energies of what is spirituality and Hmm, what do we make it mean? So let me just ask you, do you enjoy a good spiritual workout on a regular basis? Like, you know, maybe every single day. <laughs> Are you a fighter of the good fight? Or do you cycle through the dark night lows almost on purpose to more thoroughly enjoy the dawning of your inextinguishable power? Hmm, yep, well, you might just be a spiritual junkie. <laughs> And you might be saying, huh? <laughs> it might sound like a trend or a trendy thing, but 
it can actually be a form of self-sabotage. And yes, of course, you can say spirituality is your drug of choice, and I'm doing air quotes, or it gives you the good kind of high. And is it really that? Or is there something else going on? So that is what we want to do deep diving into today, is how we use spirituality in both generative and not so generative ways. Because spirituality in and of itself is neither good or bad, it's neither good for you or bad for you. It's not a right thing to choose. It's not a wrong thing to choose. It's just it's spirituality. And so it depends on how we apply it, just like everything else in life, right? <laughs> and therein lies the rub. <laughs> it's that choice thing. It can really trip us up. And uh, the premise that I play from is amongst other things, one of the premises, I guess I could say, that I play from is that we actually are and can be the dominant being, the dominant decision maker, the executive choice maker in of, in of our lives. And so a lot of the way I play and a lot of the perspective that I'm coming from is uh, that we get to that point, part of our task here, part of our journey, our adventure, our target here, is really getting to the awareness and then integrating as part of our reality that we are the, the greatest entity of our lives, that nothing outside of us is greater than we are. And when I was first introduced to that question, one, it helped a lot of things line up for me. And so um, I will just say thank you to Shannon O'Hara because she's the first person that phrased that question that way. What if nothing outside of you is greater than you are? And so I just invite you to say that question in first person for yourself. What if nothing outside of me is greater than I am? And what occurs for you, if anything, and if nothing occurs, that's okay too. But I'm just curious, what occurs for you if you apply that question to your life, to your body, to your living yeah, what if nothing outside of me is greater than I am? And there's a few episodes in particular that you might play with uh, that are in my podcast library. And uh, one of them in particular is play, Praying in Your Plenty. And I invite you to play with that episode. Um, and then a few of the first episodes of Aligning Divine as well, which were uh, back in April of this year, even though this is the the third incarnation of my show here on the network, <laughs> this incarnation launched on April 10th of this year. And so the first three or four shows really also played with a lot of that uh, kind of theme as well. So I invite you to play with those podcasts if you just want to hop over um, after you get finished playing with this one. So yeah, what if nothing outside of you is greater than you are? And uh, I love saying it in first person because it is pulling into or, or tapping that energy of I am. And there's a few ways you could play with that question in first person. So I invite you to just dance with that in whatever way it could be fun for you and see what that opens up. And that does kind of, um, not kind of, that really does connect into the conversation today. Um, spirituality is an interesting category. It's an interesting topic. It's an interesting thing, not so much uh, because of what it actually is, but more of because it's like this thing we talk about, and we can talk about it, you know, until our lips fall off. <laughs> and um, and that's part of this this question around um, when it becomes our drug. So. Really, we can make anything our drug, you know, metaphorically or literally. Um, anything can be our drug. A drug, and this is interesting because, you know, I love to play with the etymology of words. <laughs> and so when I um, clicked over to the online etymology dictionary, um, I thought it was very interesting. I looked up the word drug, and essentially it has to do with referring to dry goods, 
because the word, I think it was originally in the 14th century, was really referring to something that applied during that period when most of the medicine that was made was made using dried herbs. Now, isn't that interesting? So in the 19th century, the definition was shifting into the reference um, to being more of the common definition we we use of a drug, which is currently more along the lines of um, any substance that causes a change in an organism's physiology or psychology when consumed. And that's from Wikipedia. So it's kind of interesting there. Like it literally started out as, you know, it, it didn't have a heavy, it didn't have like a um, an assignment. It simply referred to dry goods. You know, most of the way things were preserved and transported and um, um, traded was was dry goods. They were dried or dehydrated to store them, um, to preserve them, to then, you know, have them to use throughout whatever seasons. So that that's kind of fascinating because the word drug is kind of a, a heavy word or can be kind of a heavy word in our modern um uh, reality. <laughs> and yet, what if it, it didn't have to be? So that was one piece. <laughs> so so we could actually apply the the etymologic etym the etymology of the word to our current topic today. And what if we just literally replace the word drug with dry goods? I think it's hilarious. When spirituality becomes your dry goods <laughs> I don't know why that's so it just makes me giggle. It's really light to do that and um I think partly because it takes like it really kind of starts to shatter some of that um constrictedness around the word drug and also really around addiction, the word addiction and the the condition uh, I'm doing air quotes of addiction or in some people's uh, verbiage, they might say the disease of addiction. And so today's conversation is really not to contest what a drug is, what addiction is. It's really to explore how, in particular with spirituality, we can get into that habit of becoming, in a way, very much addicted to spirituality. So so let's dive in. Um, <laughs> I still want to ask that question. When spirituality becomes your dry goods, <laughs> have you made spirituality your dry goods? <laughs> oh my gosh. So let's just start off with, are you allowing spirituality to be your medicine or your distraction? Hmm, that could be a fun question to play with. <laughs> um, whew, yeah, and how many of us learn a form of spirituality that might actually not be spirituality. So, you know, this is one of the fun and fascinating and sometimes really frustrating things about getting to play on this planet Earth playground and how we play in different cultures and, and different generations even, you know, um, is that things are modeled to us. So we learn to essentially mimic or copy or reproduce the way our elders are doing something. And that's essentially how most things are passed down or passed on or handed down. Now, there can be a whole lot of wonderful things about that. Um, there's a lot of power and m great value in our different rituals and what we call rites of passage. Um, and in some of them, they might not be as empowering. So I just invite you to be with that for your own awareness <laughs> and your own choice. And that's essentially our, our basic way that we're, that we're carrying it, things on. Okay. So very much the case with spirituality. We kind of, you know, over the eons, we've created these, these systems and these essentially structures. And, and in many cases, we've also created methods um, that we get in touch with this thing by, you know, they practices to strengthen our spirituality or to strengthen our spirit or to um, to implement or integrate and implement the practices of whatever discipline we want to study. 
um, whether that's a certain religious philosophy or um, some type of what we might refer to as a spiritual practice. So we kind of start out by taking in the information from the people who are doing it around us. And, of course, now in this era, we have the event of the Internet, (laughs) and we can actually spread that out to all over the world and see what people are doing. And we can be, you know, tapping into YouTube and different streaming channels, um, not too different from the one you're listening to right now. (laughs) And, And we can connect with, Uh, our different possibilities in that way. So we do have a lot available to us now. And of course, how brilliant are we to show up in this time and space to play with that? What did we know when we chose to come play on this planet Earth playground in this particular time? And that we could play in this particular way. And yet, it's still part of our process, part of our journey of discovery, that we get to try things on for size. And there is this innate kind of, I would say you could call it both an invitation and a challenge in a way, um, for us to really find and determine and um, allow what is really appropriate for us, allow us to, to come to know it and see it and really have that connecting with our knowing with what really does work And that's part of what I appreciate about this thing we call spirituality. Um, Of course, you know, (laughs) what I do, like a large bit of what I do in my personal life and in my professional life is um, supporting and facilitating people, including myself, um, to be connecting with that essence of them and that the spirit of them and the greater part of them and and greater is not like a, a better a greater than or lesser than it's just more like the the be the them the you that is beyond your physical body okay so we get to play with that as part of our journey and adventure here and you know everybody gets to have their own opinion their own belief their own point of view their own theory about why we come here. You know, it that is the part that is ours to discover for ourselves. And I absolutely love that we get to do that, that it is that way. Like no two people on the planet have to agree on the same thing about what their life or what life in general is for. And that's really awesome when you kind of just, really look at that you know the 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 whole choice thing is pretty huge (laughs) in our entire existence and really choice kind of gives rise to our existence in the first place if you maybe play with that a little bit yeah so we could we could play with how are you choosing to show up and when and where are you choosing to show up and And is that part of what feeds you? And what feeds you is where we typically get into the uh, occurrence, I guess we could call it, and the energy of one of the possibilities of that is the substance. We, We start to take on certain substances and we want more of it. When we make something very important, when we make something, uh, let me see if I can phrase this differently. When we make our existence depend on something, that is kind of that gray area in my experience, in, in in how I have experienced and witnessed what's going on around me in my life and with the people I've gotten to work and play with. When we make something so important that our existence depends on it. That's that gray area that it can very easily turn into how we apply our current definition of drug. 
the word drug. We we are now becoming dependent upon this thing that we that we convince ourselves is very important for our existence, for our being able to function. And so this is really interesting. There's a fascinating energy that comes up just in talking about spirituality. And have you ever met anyone who is just like, super spiritual, you know, <laughs> and uh, of course, it makes me think of J.P. Sears' skits around being ultra spiritual, his guides to being ultra spiritual, and he does the most incredible job <laughs> in the way he presents his information through his comical abilities and, and his genius, you know, because he's, his intellect is just amazing with that as well for me. Um, so he's a, he's a fun person to watch. Uh, or just kind of observe. <clears throat> and how many people have you known, or do you know, or maybe are you one of those people? Um, and are you willing to know if you're one of if you're if you're choosing that right now? <clears throat> who are so into this thing we call spirituality and being quote unquote spiritual that it it's kind of it's really not. It's a it's a it's a substance that they might be abusing, but it is it is giving them no substance. It is providing no sustenance. It's just this. It's these words that we use that we learn to use, and these phrases, and these motions, or these um, actions, right? Like, sort of like posing, right? And it's always fascinating to me how these kinds of things can show up. So, oh, so, <laughs> and anywhere we're making it like, you know, oh my gosh, if you acknowledge this about yourself or anyone else, like it's, it'll be horrible. It makes you a horrible person or you're, you're failing at the whole point of life. Please let's just take the judgment off of that <laughs> because that isn't what this is for. This is really, um, to, to just explore, you know, where are we allowing spirituality to generally, to genuinely feed us, nurture us, nourish us, and where are we actually, um, what's, what would be that word? Not hoarding, but um, where are we actually being a spiritual glutton? Like, the spiritual gluttony. Now, that's an interesting word. Holy moly. <laughs> Where are we actually in spiritual gluttony? Because we're starving ourselves. We're not actually allowing ourselves to be fed by our essence, by connecting to our spirit. Wow. That's an interesting question. Whew, okay, well, never know where these conversations are going to take us, and I always love... <laughs> Where we go, it's always amazing and holy wow, you know, like I just am so grateful. So thank you for hanging in here and, and being a part of this and for your awareness and your amazing gifts and capacities being a part of this conversation. Also, um, you don't have to be talking out loud in this conversation to be a major contribution. So please know I am grateful, however, wherever, and whenever you are playing with this conversation because you are a contribution to it, to all of them. So um, we've kind of stepped into some interesting territory and it's a good time to take a breath and take a break and just allow this energy to kind of move a bit uh, so we can actually dive in more and, and take this apart and just let it show us really um, what else we could play with here and how else we can play with this. What else could this be for us? I wonder. Hmm. You are listening to Aligning Divine. I'm Keisha Clark. I am super grateful you're here, that we're here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we will be right back after this break. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. 
Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back and forward to the next segment of Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network and I am so uh, intrigued by what we're playing with on today's topic and how today's topic is, is playing with us. We're talking about when spirituality becomes your drug. And uh, we've kind of we've gone to some interesting places so far. So uh, if it's your first time joining us, if you're just joining us right now, I invite you to play the podcast uh, when we're done here and um, and see what it brings up for you. We got to the question of... Um, are we actually, or where are we in actual spiritual gluttony? Are we practicing spiritual gluttony <laughs> as opposed to allowing that nurturing of our spirit and the nurturing that our spirit can provide? And this can apply both if you're using spiritual with a capital S or a, a lowercase s. Um, this can be of spirit as in uh, divine source, you know, life source energy. Um, can also mean your personal spirit, the spirit of you. And in either case, really, we could say, uh, you know, those are maybe connected. Those are, uh, some people might say one and the same. You know, we're all a part of source energy. And, and we're all kind of, I don't know, if a part of, it's not like we're, categories or compartments of source energy but really we all are we arise from source energy and so uh, there is that connection that we can tap into and really integrate into our lives which is as i was saying earlier you know what what we what i love to play with here especially on this show uh, this is kind of my outlet for exploring and experimenting with that whole thing of have lining up with your essence and living it every day. How do we bring that spiritual stuff into a conventional life and living, into conventional conversation? And I'm truly excited because I'm hearing more of this. I'm actually really encouraged and inspired by the numbers of people who are willing to have these kinds of conversations now. The, the fact that this is something you can actually go online and easily find, that's a kind of big deal <laughs> when you look at where we were, you know, maybe even 10, 20 years ago. Um, there was still a lot of this was considered, you know, don't talk about it out loud. And, and if you practiced any of this spiritual stuff, you know, it was still even then um, kind of something you were careful to talk about at work or <laughs> out in public, you know, and in some places that could still be very much the case. And like, how many places has that already changed? And is it changing? And would you maybe just acknowledge the contribution you're being by the choices you're making 
to have connection to your spirit, um, that that is actually a contribution to the changing of this um, in our world. Um, I love that we can be the energy of change and the energy that we be can bring about amazing change and transformation on this planet, in our lives and on this planet. And it's not something that you have to do. It doesn't have to be your job. It's just part of playing with creation. So when we look at this uh, spirituality really being our drug, I know it can be popular to say uh, it's our drug of choice. And and that's cool. <laughs> that's actually really fine. Um, and what I notice is that there are these really subtle, um, I will call them distinctions or differences. When I'm around people or when I'm, you know, even just watching different videos, when I'm observing people and experiencing people who are talking about spirituality and it's more coming from their head. Um, it's coming more from that kind of intellectual figuring things out. And it feels oftentimes like it's really about demonstrating uh, how spiritual someone is and and how even, you know, smart maybe someone is um, or how evolved <laughs> someone is. That's That's becoming a buzzword. And... I wonder if if you're able to notice this too, or are you are you willing to notice this more for yourself? Um, because there is a very subtle difference, but yet it it makes a big difference in the way the energy can move and and land in people's worlds, in their universes, and 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 what it also makes a big difference in what can be created um, between the talking from the head, we'll say, and and then the conversations about spirituality that are actually involving the whole being. So do you notice that? Um, and if you do, awesome. It's 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 not about pointing anybody out who's, you know, who who I'm perceiving is coming more from that intellectual aspect. But it's just about noticing it um, because it's it it makes a big difference in how I've been playing with this. Um, there's con there's there's this thing we do we can talk just to be talking, and it's kind of empty, right? It's so, so if you look at it as um, in the last couple of weeks we've had we've had conversation around nourishment, and you know we're looking at what is the energy that really is substantial for us? Um, and and are we willing to actually have that? And when we're having the talking from the, mostly from the intellect, it's easy to kind of get into this just, talking for the sake of talking and I, I'm there's a little bit of interesting stuff that's going on for me so I'm I'm kind of looking at this and and I'm also asking like where do I do that am I doing that and and if so where am I doing that and I'm asking for the awareness of that and would you be willing to ask just ask it's not about deciding that you are or are not doing that because again the question is are you making spirituality your drug <laughs> or are you making spirituality your dry goods? <laughs> um, and are you using that if you're, if we want to say we could just go further, if, if we're letting it be our drug, are we letting it support us or are we letting it destroy us? Are we using it somehow to destroy us or destroy possibilities? You know, um, so is it really a distraction 
to keep you from truly connecting with who you are. It's easy to fall into that. It's easy for us to find all kinds of things to keep us distracted. And there is an irony around this (laughs) for me when we use spirituality in that way. And yet we can do that. And of course, people do that with religion too. Many different um, many, many stories we have <laughs> of, of those kinds of things, right? We're using the thing that presents, you know, we present it as this wonderful, beautiful, amazing, magical thing, and yet we are at the same time actually using it as a distraction, right? It's, it's something to take up time and keep us in the noise, it's not really, we're not really allowing it to take us to more of us. We're talking about it. We're demonstrating. We're posturing, right? We're preaching, so to speak, and not in a, not in a generative way, <laughs> right? So it's kind of like we're doing the do what I say, not as I do <laughs> kind of thing. And isn't that interesting that we can make, we can abuse any substance, really. We we can choose to abuse anything. Anything can be our substance, metaphorically or literally. And the interesting thing that I notice about substance abuse is there is no substance to what we're abusing. Like, the fact that we're abusing it, you know, when we're getting into the have to have it, have to stay fixed on it, there's no substance. It can't, how do I say this? We can't get to the the actual substance of what we're talking about or what we're tapping into. It cannot provide sustenance when we are abusing it, right? So it can't sustain us. Because when we turn it into that thing we have to have, we've automatically made it, and this is energetically speaking, when we make something the thing that we have to have, by the nature of what we choose in that making it the thing we have to have, we actually keep ourselves from being able to receive it. Because in order to need it, we have to be resisting it first. Holy moly. Okay. Thank you all for the contribution of that. (laughs) Because that was kind of a profound little moment. Do you get that? Isn't that fascinating? (sighs) Wondering if Rhonda caught that. Because I kind of know what I said. and, And it was just flowing through. And it was really interesting. It's kind of like those in those fascinating dichotomies that we do. <laughs> but the moment we decide we need something, we are by the nature of choosing that we need it, we are making it unavailable to us because we have to separate ourselves from it to think that we need it. Oh my goodness. Now that kind of brought up some emotion for me because I look at how many of us get into that um, into that kind of trap, really, right? Of um, thinking or or letting ourselves be convinced that we need to be spiritual and therefore we have to strive for that to to do it right in many ways like in in many cases and therefore when we just by the nature of us buying that point of view we are shifting the energy in such a way or actually we're configuring the energy in such a way that it separates us from us it's a way we separate us from us And then in 
feeling the absence of it or or feeling like it is absent from us, we get hungrier. We get restless. We can get more confused and more frustrated. It becomes harder. It feels like it requires more effort. And we have to keep after the thing we think we need because we're thinking we don't have it or we're thinking we don't have enough of it. And if we're thinking we're not doing something right, that's another way of saying we don't have enough of it. or we don't have it right enough. So are you doing this weird kind of separation with you and your spirit in some way, in some aspect of your life, or even right out loud, right out front? (laughs) And if that is something that is occurring for you, are you... Are you willing to just take a breath and ask your spirit to show you the energy of you? Of the you, the energy of the you that is beyond your body, beyond this physical, mental existence. What if you could just ask it to show itself to you, to show you the energy of it? Because my beautiful, amazing creators and friends, (laughs) it is yours for the asking. And that applies to everything. Your spirit your life, your vitality. And in conventional language, we would say the kingdom is yours for the asking. So isn't it interesting how we can get caught up in the notion that we could ever be without it in the first place? Yeah. And what if that's just another part of what we come here to play with and how we come here to play? Is to just get that. And maybe every time we can remember it, it's a way that we are celebrating. What if that's just a way we ring that bell, right? You know, in the games where you have to go through the obstacle courses and get to the bell. What if we really like that? (laughs) What if that's really fun for us? In, in, on a different level. But what if that is where we get to have a thorough enjoyment? What if that makes life more robust for us? And if that applies for you, then have it. Let yourself have it. Would you choose that for you? How much more expansive and creatively joyful could life become if we were willing to let ourselves have what actually does make us feel alive, truly alive at every level of our being. And what would it take for us to be choosing that? (laughs) What is the energy of that? And let's tap into that and bring it into this moment and let it Help us move forward. Let it add to the momentum of our creating our life. Even more amazingly than we ever imagined. Without it requiring us needing to find ourselves or to somehow do the right thing to be whole. But just knowing we are whole. We can claim that and own that and be that simply for the asking in any moment, any moment. I promise you it's there. It's here. It's right here. Wow. It's right here. 
we're right here. There's a whole lot of amazingness here. <laughs> and I'm just going to share it with the whole world. Woo! Um, just feeling the vibes. This is pretty pretty amazing and so very different than what I imagined this conversation to be. And I'm so freaking grateful that we get to do this. So uh, let's take another break, another breath, if you will. Let yourself just receive this. There's some nice stuff kind of bubbling around. And if you're willing to perceive it, ask it to get stronger in your life and in your body and in your field and in your energy. And let's play with that. Yeah. So we are here aligning divine and we are aligning today, my friends. Wow. We are on the Inspired Choices Network and we'll be right back after this little break. (laughs) Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. Or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. Wowzers, and welcome back and forward to this last little bit of today's Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network. I am still Keisha Clark, and I am still super-duper grateful for you. <laughs> and I want to share something with you. I uh, Around 5 o'clock this morning, it, it, as of today, November 13th, when we're having this live recording, um, it occurred to me, it's a month, it's one month from my birthday, and I just had this gigantic um, nudge, (laughs) if you will, to play with my birthday this year. Um, I am a December 13th baby. I love the number 13. Today is November 13th, as I said, for the live taping of this show. And so uh, here's what we're going to play with. Here's what I'm playing with. I am offering a month of special rates and offers to you, anyone who wants to play, and we're going to, we're going to play with the number 13 and it's going to be from November 13th to December 13th. <laughs> um so there's going to be all kinds of cool stuff you can do and I have created an event uh page in Facebook to share all of that and uh so the link to access that information is right here in today's show post and I invite you to click on that and uh, I am getting all of the details onto that page for the different offerings. Um, but one of the offerings will be a, a group call on Friday the 13th of December, and it will be for us to start smashing through our uh, our old year and into our new year. I think it's so fun because I also play with numerology. And uh, the number 13 adds up to a four. And, of course, we're coming into the year 2020, which also adds up to a four. It's also kind of a master sort of number, which, you know, we can we don't have to go into that. But it's just all kinds of yumminess for me. So I really want to play with that. So um, that call for Friday the 13th for us to kick off the new year, if you just want to play with a single item, is going to be $13 ah! <laughs> for a group call. <laughs> so how fun is that? So I'm having all kinds of fun playing with how many ways can we play with 13. So uh, just hop over to the uh, event page to find out more about these fun things that I'm going to be throwing out into the world here. And the prices will be available, as I said, November 13th through December 13th. 
And so the purchases you make, you can make your purchases during that particular time period, and then you can use your, your appointments in a different time period. I'll, I'll give you probably four to six months to use those sessions as you purchase them. Um, and there's going to be another little fun thing to do with a membership that I have starting in the year 2020. Um, and of course, there's going to be a special rate for that if you want to get in the door before December 13th. <laughs> so um, just come check it out. It's me sharing my happy for my birthday with you. And that's just part of my way of uh, appreciating you and thanking you and inviting you to play more. And perhaps, as we were talking about in today's topic, even begin to or, or go further in making that shift integrating what is really true for you, getting into that essence of you, tapping into it, lining up with it, and really really getting clarity for yourself of what it is for you to live it every day. How do you bring it into your everyday life? And that's part of our, that's just part of really, I think our privilege, you know, we we talk about having dominion here on this planet. And and I, for me, dominion is a privilege. It's not ownership. Um, really, we get to be the dominant being in our life. And at the same time, we get to participate here. And we can participate in so many different ways, um, whether we're doing that in a literal three-dimensional physical way or whether we're doing that by contributing energy, by contributing vibrationally. Um, it's all a part of us. And so I really, today's topic, today's conversation really feels like it is inviting us to know that we can receive the sustenance from our spirit and from spirit without needing to need it. <laughs> we don't have to need it in order to have it. We just ask it to show itself and show up. And we allow ourselves to receive it and be it. And be willing to have that connection in a more congruent and cognitive way. And when we are willing to play from that space, that can create so much more and we can create in such a different way um, and that is what I desire to continue to explore for me personally um, it is part of what gets me high and and in a good way <laughs> and it does feed my soul as well as my body and my being um, so that is really where I desire to invite you and inspire you to look to today and this week and be playing with Okay, what if I don't have to find my spirit? What if what if it's just here and all I do have to do is just choose to let it show up to me and let myself be aware of it. Let myself have my awareness of it and be able to interpret it in how it works for me, be able to perceive it, what it feels like what the energy is like, what is the signature, the vibration, the frequency, what are the what is the gamut of that that I can sort of surf, if you will. <laughs> so this week, what if you could allow yourself to be fed, to be sustained, and to grow into even more of the spirit of you in this physical existence, with this physical existence? and have an amazing time choosing it, doing it, and receiving it. And until next week, I invite you to be having more of that joy of lining up with your essence and living it every day. We'll be back next week. Thank you for being you, amazing ones. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Aligning Divine Radio Show. Keisha Clark has more to share next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And for now, she is cheering you on to create an awesome week of lining up with your essence and living.